every weapon release, how it has happened from the beginning till now, is I, I will write the, the structure of the riffs and um, bring it to the rehearsal, and then we sort of all put it together. Um, this time around, it wasn't much different than that. You know, I wrote the, 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 ba the basics of most of the songs, the, the skeleton, and then you know brought it to the table. We, we have a new guitar player now who joined it not very long ago. Wrong surgery, but he actually ended up writing a, a decent amount of riffs for the song. So that's different this time around. Uh, also, the disciple actually wrote a, a riff um, that's never happened before. So it's this is definitely more of a collective effort in the songwriting department than any previous Weapon uh, album, uh, and I, I think that's a great thing because everybody's getting more uh, comfortable in their roles within the band and then everybody's strengths are uh, starting to shine through tenfold. That one blows this one out of the water, I think. I can, I can hear more of your riff than this one. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. There's way more clarity to it. We yeah. call it the green head mm -hmm. here at the studio. It's, it's essentially, I was doing a record for a friend. He came in uh, one morning, and he's, he's an app builder. Uh, his name's Steve Kennedy in here in Edmonton. And he brought this head in, and it wasn't a head at the time. It was just a, it was just a, a fucking ball of cables, essentially, inside of a metal rack. And you, you'd electrocute yourself if you picked it up properly. I don't want to tell you too much about it. Yeah, don't give away the secrets. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's uh, essentially a Marshall GMP-1, or, or GMP, um, heavily modified. So it sounds like a, it sounds like a Marshall on steroids. So we actually use that for a ton of the rhythm tracks. And it, this, this thing just cuts. It just cuts in all the right ways. Like the, the picking, it's thick, it's meaty. So we use for Sean's rhythms. Yeah, and that's all of Sean's rhythms. So that's one half. Very, very, almost like a Black Sabbath kind of tone. <laughs> His sound. He's got this. He's got this dual rack, and I've recorded like a million dual racks. And he's got this dual rack that just fucking slays. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe the maybe the tubes are fucked up, but it's it's fantastic. It's it's big. It's open. It's fast. It's really fast sound. So we we uh you know we went through uh we, we tried we tried a single two duels. We tried some orange stuff. Um, we ended up going with Nash's stock amp. It sounds fantastic. It's got it's got one really good tone. And we use that for all the leads too. Yeah, and then we use it for all the leads as well. There's no adjustment. We were, gonna, we were getting ready for this big setup for Vuitton and Sean played in, even though he was first to go. And, uh, you know, he, he just started noodling around and we completely skipped the entire let's set up a lead guitar sound idea because we didn't realize that, I mean, we just, it sounded so good right off the bat. We recorded a song and then we realized, like, hey, are we supposed to actually change some of this for lead tone? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but that was it, man. Like, we, we basically just went, we just jumped straight into leads in a matter of seconds and just started going with it. Same, same setup. Hey, you want some, uh, some delay on your lead? Just a little bit of, little bit of bounce to play with? Yeah, yeah. Like as I play? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Or how's this sound? That's how I'm used to playing. I usually have always delay on it. <laughs> Listen to the record, you know, have some fun and unplug one of your speakers and go back and forth. To be heard the difference between Mash's tone and Sean's tone, how they balance each other out to make this wide kind of sound we got going. Mm -hmm. 